good morning. We are so glad you're here this morning. It's such a special day for uh, uh, us as a church and for our, our church family and for our extended family. And we appreciate you so much being here and being a part of this celebration. So we're going to ask if you would, let's stand as we begin with our call to worship as we just share and celebrate the blessed assurances that we have through our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Let's sing together. Gracious God, we are so very thankful today to be able to take a few moments and to gather here in your house to come and to praise and to bless your holy name, Father, and to know as we gather here today for this special event in the life of our church, Father, where these families are coming today to commit themselves to raising their children in the ways of the Lord and to following the teachings of scriptures. And Father, today we just rejoice and celebrate this and we just give it all back to you, Father, as we find the examples in scripture today. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the blessings of this moment. And thank you for your son, Jesus, who gave absolutely everything for us so that we might have the opportunity to live for you. And for it's in Jesus' name we pray these things. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. Take a moment to welcome each other into God's house. No touching, please. I'm 
much. You may be seated. And we rejoice to be a part of the family of God. If you've not had the opportunity this morning to take some time and spend some time in prayer with the Lord, we want to make that available to you now. I know that there are many prayer requests within our hearts, and so I just simply ask you for the next few moments that you offer a word of praise to our Lord and then take your burdens and, and lay them at His feet. So church, let's pray. Gracious God, in the stillness of this moment, we've come to say thank you for your many rich blessings and for the opportunities that we've been given to come and to, to celebrate and to worship and to praise your holy name. Lord, as we approach your throne, we ask that you please hear our prayers as we are remembering situations in our own lives or in the lives of friends or family members that need a special touch from you. Lord, we pray for comfort, for strength. We pray for healing and for guidance. We pray, Lord, to just feel your presence through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Thank you for allowing us to have this moment in your presence. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, Amen. Thank you so much. It is our offertory hymn now, and as you know, we will collect our offerings as you leave today. There are tithe baskets at all the doors. You give as the Lord leads, and we would appreciate it. So let's stand if we could, please, and let's count our many blessings. All right, this will be our offertory time. So did you stand? When upon my spills you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with the load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, save them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings, money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be Discourage God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and 
God forgive you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessing, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Amen. You may be seated. I had to notice the grandparents in the room singing and smiling that song. Count your many blessings. Thank you for coming and being a part of this worship service today. We've got a lot of scriptures we're going to be looking at today as we prepare our hearts for what we're about to do. But I would encourage you to go ahead and open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1, and we'll spend a few moments there in just a second uh, as we continue to give God some praise for His blessings. So we modified this song, it's one we've done many times, but it's a reminder that as parents, our prayers are that we do the best that we can do for our kids, and that we somehow, we pray that in our, our efforts, we have the possibility of leading them to faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And the song is the prayer. You've heard it before on the radio, I know. We changed the words to make it the parents' prayer. But it's a reminder for us as parents that it is our desire to be sure that we do the best we can. doesn't mean we have to be perfect, although my kids know that I am. But it means that we're trying, that we're reaching out, and that we're asking for the power and the presence of the Lord to guide us through this process. Hear these words. Let them encourage you today. I pray you'll be my eyes and watch them as they go and teach them to be wise. Help me to let go and every parent's prayer. child knows. Lead them to a place, guide them with your grace, to a place where they'll be safe. I pray they find your darkness falls each night. Remind them where you are in every parent's prayer. Every child knows need to find a them to a place, give them faith so they'll be safe. Lead them to a place, guide them with your grace to a place where they'll be Praise Him, praise Him, all you little children. Would you stand with us as we sing this great song from our childhood that we remember that encourages us now in our faith. Praise Him, praise Him, all you little children. children. God is love. God is love. Love Him. Love Him. All you little children. God is love. God is love. Thank Him. Thank Him. All you little 
children. God is love. God is love. Thank Him, thank Him, all you little children. God is love. God is love. Serve Him, serve Him, all you little children. God is love. God is love. Serve Him, serve Him, all you little children. God is love. God is love. Last verse. Crown Him, crown Him, all you little children. God is love. God is love. Crown Him, crown Him, all you little children. God is love. God is love. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. For God is truly love. So today we gather here in this place at this special time for a recognition time. So what is child dedication? Some churches do it differently, and the churches have different ways of recognizing children who grow up in faith. But in the Baptist church, traditionally what we do is called a, a child dedication. And actually it's, it's about the children, but it's also about the parents. And it's also about the family. And it's also about the congregation. Because it's a, a joint effort for us to all come together for the purposes of encouraging and teaching children in the ways of faith. Faith and trust in Jesus Christ. There's nothing about this service that, that guarantees salvation because we believe that the individual has to come to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ on their own. For Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for it's by grace that we've been saved through faith. And not from ourselves. It's a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. But when we gather here today, we've come to celebrate. Celebrate God's blessings. And in your Bible, as you turn to 1 Samuel in chapter 1, you're going to read about the birth of Samuel. And you'll be going to see the first episode of the first child dedication that was there. For Hannah was blessed later in life to have a child, and she realized that truly this child, Samuel, was a blessing from God. So look in your Bibles and your apps, and let's go with me, please, to 1 Samuel 1, beginning in verse 24. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, and young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an epaph of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli. And she said to him, Pardon me, my Lord, as surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. Hannah had longed for a child, and if you know that story and read that entire chapter, it's a messy chapter. It gets kind of ugly. But in this one moment, there's a time when Hannah desires more than anything to be a mom. And she goes before God and she continues to pray that God will bless her in that way. And eventually God does. And she knows without a shadow of a doubt that this blessing is truly from God. And she wants to take that child back to the temple and dedicate him to the temple. To dedicate him into the ways of God. Now, if you know the rest of the story, let me just say to the young parents that are here today. She left him there for the church leaders to raise. We're not doing that today. Okay? Thank you, but no. But in this story, she came and she offered up blessings and she thanked God for God's faithfulness. And it's important for us to recognize that today. The parents in this room will surely tell these young parents that life is difficult, that being a family is hard, that being a parent is difficult. I'm so thankful that I'm on the grandparent side of it because I never have to use the word no. It's a blessing. But when we were parents, we had to say no a lot, didn't we? We had to encourage and strengthen and help protect. If you flip in your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 6, God is giving specific direction to the nation of Israel. Deuteronomy 6, beginning in verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Verse 7 says, impress them on your children. Talk about this with them when you sit at home or when you walk along the road or when you lie down or when you get up. 
He was encouraging those parents to be reminded that it is so important that we encourage and tell these young people about the Lord. Because if we don't, the world's going to tell them other things. And we need to do our best to be sure that we raise them in the ways of the Lord. Impress to your children. It's important to be sure that we bring our children, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, our neighbor's children up in the ways of the Lord. And if we have the opportunity to influence them in some way, that we take full advantage of it. Was this important to Jesus? Look in Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but his disciples rebuked him. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and he said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. So you have this image in your mind where Jesus is sitting there, and these parents are, are bringing their small children into the presence of Jesus, and they just want Jesus to bless them, to pray for them, to touch them. And, of course, the disciples, who get themselves in more trouble than anybody I know of, the disciples are sitting going, hey, wait a minute, this is, what he's got to do here is really important. Don't bother him with these things. And Jesus' response is immediate. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Let these children come to me and do not hinder them. Verse 15, he goes on, Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, and he placed his hands on them, and he blessed them. He blessed them. Children are important to our Lord and Savior. And as parents, we give the responsibility to be sure that we at least point them in the direction. We can't force them. We can't make them become believers because what would God receive out of that? Nothing. But if we lead them in the ways of righteousness, if we do our best to at least point them towards the Lord, then they might have the opportunity later in life to come to that personal knowledge of Jesus Christ, of who Jesus is, to be able to open their hearts and put their faith in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, to find forgiveness of sin and that eternal gift, to be able to walk in the presence of the Lord every single day and to be an heir to the kingdom of God a co-heir with Jesus Christ as we have this amazing opportunity. We don't take this responsibility lightly. We realize that it's important. And for those of us who are in the church, maybe, maybe this is not much for us today because we don't have kids that are growing up right now and, and we're not involved, but you're part of the congregation. You're part of the family of God. And churches throughout the world have this responsibility to be sure that we provide the opportunities for young people to be able to come and to follow, to put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We say it often, you may be the only Bible that somebody reads this week. What message are you sharing with them? What hope are you leading them to? What faith is shining through your words and your examples this week. We are called as families and as a church to do our best to lead others in the ways of the Lord. And so that's what we want to do today. These young families are coming. They're not declaring their perfection. They're not saying they have everything right. What they're saying is we're going to do our best. We're going to do our best to raise these children in the ways of the Lord. We're going to do our best to point them to something greater than themselves, and that's Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask if these young families will come and join us today and just gather across the front of the church in groups, and we'll kind of stay between the columns if we can for the folks who are watching at home. Come on forward. And yes, that's mine making all the noise, and I love it. Shift on down. Keep going. Yeah. All right. That's good. That's good. All right. We shift back the other way just a little bit. <laughs> They're watching from home, so we gotta make sure we get you on the camera. You were given another sheet when you came in today. I hope you'll take that for just a moment. 
take a look at it. And as we get to your portion of the service and where you're included here in the bold writing, I'm going to ask you to stand to be a part of this encouraging for these young families. It's awesome to be a part of this today. I'm a pastor who loves kids in church. If you can't out-preach a child talking in church, you're in trouble. I love kids in church. One of the early churches that my dad served years ago, they didn't have a nursery. What they would do for every church service was put pallets across the front of the church, and you bring your kids down and let them play during the service. Now, of course, back then the preachers were a little different. They didn't need a PA either. But that's how you would celebrate, and that's how you would come together in the ways of faith. These families that are presenting themselves to you today need your prayers. Because we know how difficult it is to be a parent, to be a family, and the challenges that they're going to face. And they need to know that you as family members and as congregation members, you're going to come alongside of them to help equip them and to help bring them up. So I'm going to ask if you will take your sheet. Now, parents, we're going to start with you. You'll reply in the affirmative, I hope, that you have these sheets just by simply saying, we do. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Do you recognize that this child is a gift from God and both thank God and glorify Him for the blessings of your child? We do. Do you accept the joys and responsibilities of parenting, promising to give proper love and care to your child throughout their life? We do. I'm going to ask your grandparents or extended family members who may be here to please stand at this time. All right, this next question is for you, and I hope you will answer in the affirmative. With the help that our Lord provides, do you, as family members, do you commit to this, teach this child in the fullness of God's Word and demonstrate through your own example and witness what it means to love God with all your heart and soul and strength? We do. Thank you. Church, I'm asking you to stand. All congregation, everybody who's here, please stand. Because whether you go to this church or to another church, this is important for you as well. Will you offer your continuing love, support, prayers, and encouragement to these families? Will you pray for these children and to the best of your ability, help teach and set a godly example for them so they might one day have the opportunity to personally trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Yes. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, thank you for the blessings of this day. Lord, as we stand before you as family members, as parents, as grandparents, as extended family, and as church family, we take this seriously today, Lord. For these families are coming today to dedicate themselves, and their children to raise them in the ways of, the wor of your word. Lord, there will be all kinds of challenges. But Lord, bless them and guide them and strengthen them in the days to come. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of such a special moment in their life. For Lord, they have committed to do the best that they can to recognize that these children truly are a blessing from God. They've done the best that they can to come and, and to say that they're going to prepare themselves and prepare their hearts and prepare their homes to do the best that they can to raise these children to bring glory and honor to you. And we as extended family members and as church members come alongside them, Father, to say we're here for them. We're their safety net. We're here to support and pray and encourage them, Lord, in their times of need. And we thank you for that responsibility that we have. Now, Lord, bless them. Bless these beautiful children. And we pray, God, that your blessings will be upon them in the years to come. Thank you for this moment, and thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, we pray. All of God's people said amen. I'm going to start at this end of the row. Congregation, you can be seated. Grant, would you just introduce your family, and we'll just kind of work our way down the line, please. This is Beatrice. Keep on going. Absolutely. Let's give them a round of applause for coming today, will you? <laughs> Families, if you'll turn and face me for just a moment, and we're going to present you with a gift here in a second. But first of all, I want you to know how important it is that you understand that we 
take what you're doing here today seriously. And we know that it's not easy, but these folks that are behind you, that love you and are praying for you, are going to continue to do so each and every day. They're going to encourage you and, and do their best to help you raise these kids in the ways of the Lord. And we're excited that you've come today to be a part of it. You know, turn back around. Kim's going to present each one of you with a book that we hope will help you in the process as you begin each night sharing with these kids Bible stories and prayers that will encourage them in the faith. May the Lord bless you and continue to keep you. Thank you for being a part of this today. Let's give another round of applause. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you all. Thank you so much. So now the work begins. Not only for them as families, but for us as church as we now come alongside of them and try to encourage them in the best ways that we can. It does not mean, and I'm not calling anybody in this room to a level of perfection because we know that we are not perfect. We are made perfect in our relationship with Christ Jesus. But we are making a commitment to support these families and encourage these families as much as possible. And may the Lord continue to bless each and every one. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for making this commitment. For the extended family members that are here today, we appreciate your willingness to come and to support. For the church, we thank you for your willingness to stand and say you're going to do your best to help. And for these young families, don't be afraid to ask for help from time to time. It's okay. We've been there. We've done that. Sometimes you need a little extra support and a little extra help, and that's what your church family is here for. We thank you so much for being a part of this service. I pray that God has blessed you and encouraged you in some way in the reading of His Word. We have followed a biblical example from Samuel and Deuteronomy to to take these children, realize they truly are a blessing from God, and now to do our best to raise them in the ways of the Lord. But please don't do like Hannah. Take them home. Don't leave them here. But thank you for being a part of this service. And I pray God continues to bless each and every one. Lord, we just come today to thank you for your blessings to thank you that we've had a great opportunity to come and to recognize as a church that our work doesn't end just because we go home from church on Sunday mornings. That we have the opportunity to continue to influence and encourage others. And especially with these young families, Lord, who are coming along. Help us to be that encouragement as they grow in their faith. And I pray, Lord, that all of us will learn that with each passing day, We need you more and more in our lives. With each passing day, we learn to lean more and more upon you for strength, for direction, and for blessing, and especially for forgiveness. Gracious God, it has been an honor to be a part of this service today, to come and to celebrate. And I pray, Lord, that through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit is working in someone's life that after the service, I'll remain down front. I just pray, Lord, they'll come and let's celebrate. Lord, if you're maybe knocking at the door of someone's heart to to open their heart and to receive you and to begin this journey of faith, Lord, we truly want to celebrate that. Lord, maybe you're calling someone to unite with this congregation. Lord, we are here to receive. We're not perfect, but we want the people to come alongside of us and stand shoulder to shoulder as we do our best to, to serve the Lord in this community. Lord, you may be calling someone for some other reason. Whatever it may be, help us all to be faithful to that call. Lead us now in this time of invitation, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is a very familiar song for most of us. It's simply, Jesus loves me. And again, if God's doing something in your heart or life today and you want to come after the service, I'll stay down front. Just come and talk to me. Let's pray about it. Let's celebrate God working in your life. And now let's celebrate his love. Let's stand together as we sing, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong, they are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me who died.
child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thank you so much for coming today and being a part of this service. Thank you to the young families who have come, who have made a commitment to do their best to raise their children in the ways of the Lord. For their extended families who have gathered here today, support them. Keep up the good work. Keep supporting. And for the congregation, continue, please, to pray. Especially if you've been there and done that, you know the difficulties and challenges they face, and they need all of our prayers. And we are so thankful that we get to be a part of this journey. There are some announcements on the back of your bulletin. Please take a moment, if you would, to read those upcoming events with Meals on Wheels. Graduate and Scholarship Sunday. The deadline for the scholarship applications has passed, but I know the committee has those applications and they're working through them. So on June 5th, we will celebrate all of our graduates and all those receiving scholarships from Cone Baptist Church and the Kohler Scholarship, and we look forward to it. Also following that will be a regularly quarterly scheduled business meeting. Uh, then you'll see some other activities there. Lunch Bunch has changed their date to June 15th. Note that that is a change, but we look forward to having that great time of celebration. Also, we need some help with the AV needs. As we said, we need some people who like to push buttons. If you want to be a director of television, this <laughs> is your chance. We need your help. If you'll see Pete upstairs, he'll be glad to talk to you about it. We're going to start doing some training pretty soon. Vacation Bible School is right around the corner, June 20th through the 23rd. Volunteers are needed. And also today, you see the beautiful flowers on the altar have been given in memory of Miss Pauline Swan by Norma Dean Anderson and Charles Swan. We thank you so much for doing that today. Anything you'd like to share with us before we go? Take a picture before we let everybody come back. I've been told and I've Real been directed that all the young families need to come back up front for a photo op before Real you quick. leave. She said it, not me. Okay? Thank you so much for coming. May God bless you this week. And I hope you have the opportunity to live and serve him in everything that you do and say. Gracious God, for the many blessings, we give you thanks. Lead us now as we prepare to leave from this place to go out into this world. Guide our footsteps. Give us strength to serve you as we serve others. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless. Thank you for coming. Thank you.